guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight is the fourth installment of our seasonal series, recipes focusing on the holidays. And this was a highly requested recipe. So tonight we are going to be making eggnog and it's gonna be ketogenically friendly eggnog. So come along with me and let's get started. traditional Christmas time recipe all around the world most countries have a version of some kind of eggnog drink or a milk and egg infused alcoholic beverage of some kind so tonight we are going to be making a sugar-free version because eggnog and cartons have a lot of sugar and artificial flavors and colors but we also want to be able to enjoy some of the traditional things at Christmas time like eggnog. So we are going to be making a homemade version that is ketogenically friendly. So let's go ahead and get cooking. So to begin our eggnog, we need a very large saucepan. In my case, I'm going to be using my Dutch oven. So you need something, <clears throat> excuse me, you need something large because we are gonna be having four cups of liquid. So make sure that what you're using will accommodate four cups of liquid. So into our Dutch oven or our large saucepan, the first thing that we're going to need is two cups of unsweetened almond milk. And you wanna make sure that you get the unsweetened. Uh, mine happens to be vanilla flavor, which is fine, but uh, sometimes if you just get vanilla almond milk, it will be the sweetened kind, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Then we need two cups of heavy cream. Just incorporate those two. Now I'm going to set my burner on push medium. We just want to start getting this warmed up. We don't want it to boil or anything like that. We just want to start getting it heated. My liquids, I'm going to be adding a couple of cinnamon sticks that I'm going to break. And this is just going to infuse some cinnamon flavor. I'm also going to be adding some ground cinnamon. And we are going to be sieving this so all of this will be removed from your eggnog. And this is an optional step, but it's nice to infuse real cinnamon in there. I'm also going to be putting in some fresh ground nutmeg. And when you do it that way, you usually get the whole nutmeg. And then I just use my nutmeg grater and put nutmeg in, and they just come in a berry. I like it very nutmeggy. You can add as much or as little as you like. I'll be adding some additional after our eggnog has been cooking. So we just want to let this come to temperature. Separate bowl, we are going to begin with our egg yolks. Eggnog has egg yolks in it. And so I'm going to begin separating my eggs and putting them into a bowl. You're going to need six yolks. Now when you separate an egg, they do make eggs, um, egg separators that you can just, you know, put the egg in and it does all that stuff for you, but it's not generally that hard. I usually just like to take a separate bowl and then I try to crack my egg halfway if I can. And then that creates like two little spoons and you just put the eggs from shell to shell until all the white has come off and you're left with just the yolk. And then I put my yolk in the bowl. And I'm going to do Let's that go six outside. times. The snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. 
We're holding hands to keep each other warm while we stand and watch a choir perform and all the Christmas songs that we love. Get yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas A moment we'll fill with love and joy mm -mm, So beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe's baby with you I don't need any presents As long as I spend this day with you mm -mm, So beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe So there we have our six egg yolks I'm gonna check on my simmering milks here and they are about the temperature that we need. So I'm going to turn this off for a few minutes. So into our egg yolks, we are going to put our sweetener. I am going to be using a powdered product, not a granulated product, just so that it incorporates better. Sometimes when you use a granulated product, you're left over with granules and I don't want that. So I'm putting in about a half a cup here. I'm also going to put in a couple of squeezes of liquid sweetener. You could use stevia if you preferred. I just like using a combination of sweeteners to help prevent and offset any cooling that erythritol can sometimes have. I'm going to whisk the egg yolks and the sweetener until they are combined and lightened. You're just looking for it to get a little bit lighter and a little creamier and basically to incorporate your sweetener into your yolks. Around midnight, way up high, there's an angel in the sky. The glitter and the shine, she must be divine. What a night, what a sight. Ring the bell. Loud and clear Have the reindeer Reappear Take my hand You promised land Here We go I have wished upon a star I've Okay, you can see that it's just a little lighter and fluffier. Now the next step that we want to do is called tempering. And when you temper something, especially with eggs because you don't want them to curdle, you need to take a little bit of the warm milks and put just a very small amount into your eggs so that your eggs can come to the temperature that your milk is before we put everything in and start our cooking process. So I'm going to be taking just a very little amount of my milks and put it into my eggs and I'm going to beat that simultaneously. We go. I'm going to do it a couple more times just to make sure that our eggs are the right temperature. Okay, now our eggs are much closer to the temperature of our milks. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back into our saucepan, stirring constantly. Our eggs are now inside our milks and I'm going to turn the temperature back on and have about on a six is what I have it on, on my stove, which is about 
in between medium and medium high. We're just going to get a nice simmer and we're going to keep stirring. We need this to come to temperature about 160 degrees. I'm going to be getting my thermometer out here in a minute. But we're just slowly and gently warming our eggs and our milks together because we are trying to form a custard so that our product will thicken when it is refrigerated. Basically, eggnog is very similar to ice cream unfrozen. It is a custard type product. So you're doing similar things that you would if you were making ice cream, only you're not going to freeze. So I have my thermometer here and it's digital. And I'm just checking the temperature. It's about 140 right now. We're looking for about 160, and if you do not have a um, thermometer, it's not crucial because we're going to be checking the consistency of our custard here in a few minutes to see if it coats the back of a wooden spoon or any spoon that you have would be fine. And you want it to kind of have a film, and I will show you when we get closer to temperature. This step here is going to take about six to eight minutes. This is really the only long process of making eggnog. And you'll see when we have a finished product that your eggnog is going to be different than what you're used to um, getting in a carton at the grocery store. The product that is put in a carton, number one, it has high fructose corn syrup in it. It also has a lot of artificial flavors and colors. So they usually you will use annatto or turmeric, which are pretty natural products, but that's what makes it that bright neon yellow color that you usually see eggnog. Additionally, they put um, a bunch of thickeners, gums, and things like that. But they also use things like nutmeg oil, and that's why your flavors are incredibly intense in an eggnog product that comes out of a carton. So it's, it's quite far from natural. So your homemade eggnog is going to be um, a little lighter and fresher tasting. We have about reached temperature. I'm going to start checking it with my wooden spoon. And it's, it's starting to coat. It's getting there. Just a couple more minutes. And your eggnog is going to do most of its thickening as it cools in the refrigerator. Overnight is best, but at least for several hours until it becomes a chilled product. Now once you've left it overnight, I made a batch um, two days ago, and um, CJ and I have been drinking it. And you can thin it if you prefer your eggnog to be a little bit thinner. It generally will thicken up quite a bit in the refrigerator and you can just thin it out with a little bit more of the almond milk if you want. My favorite way to thin it out is adding some alcohol <laughs> because both rum and bourbon are extremely traditional in eggnog. In fact, eggnog started out as an alcoholic product called grog and it was eventually added um, with the eggs and the milk to make eggnog. And of course a lot of people also make lattes and coffee drinks with eggnog. Okay, it is done. I'm going to turn off my heat and to prepare my bowl because we are going to sieve this. Okay, so now we are going to sieve our cooked eggnog into a bowl for transfer to the refrigerator for chilling. So I have a sieve here and a bowl. My bowl has a lip so when it comes time to pour our eggnog into glasses or another container it's a little easier. So I'm going to take my cooked eggnog and pour it through the sieve. And that is going to assist us in catching the um, cinnamon stick that we broke. And you can see that it's nicely thickened there in the bottom of my Dutch oven. <clears throat> Gaze upon the sky Christmas on my mind Somewhere from a place up high above 
Okay, so I have our eggnog ready for chilling, but before I do that, I'm going to add a couple more um, elements of spice to make this really eggnoggy. So I'm going to add a couple of sprinkles of cinnamon. I know that we infused our cinnamon stick in there, but I'm also going to add some regular cinnamon. And of course you can do this however spicy you like your eggnog. And of course you can put this on before you drink your beverage as well. I'm also going to add a little bit of nutmeg that's already ground just for ease. And once again, you can add nutmeg on top of your eggnog when you're ready to serve. And I'm just going to start infusing those into our eggnog, giving it a nice good whisk. Then the last ingredient that I'm going to be adding to our eggnog before we put it into the refrigerator to chill, I have infused some vanilla bean, just in a little bit of vanilla extract. When you use vanilla bean powder, you need to let it bloom, and that means that you need to put it into a product with alcohol or water so that it assists it in opening up its full vanilla potential. So I'm just going to add that. And this is also going to infuse our eggnog with beautiful vanilla flavor and also the color from the vanilla bean. It's going to give it that pretty vanilla flex in it. Okay, so there is our eggnog, nice and spicy, creamy and thick, and we are going to put it into our refrigerator, and we are going to wait until it has chilled down, and then we will prepare a glass and let CJ have a taste. Bless Here we go. Here's our eggnog, and it's going into the refrigerator to rest and chill. So for serving, it all depends on how you're going to be serving this. If you're going to have it at a party, you will probably have a punch bowl and um, smaller glasses. If you're going to be serving it in a mug like tonight that I'm going to be serving to CJ for the taste test, it all depends on what style glass you want. This also looks pretty in martini glasses or something similar. So you can see that our eggnog has thickened up and I have stirred it around very well. And you will probably want to do that before serving. Just make sure it gets stirred up well. And it's really beautiful. You can see the specks of vanilla and nutmeg. Now you can do a couple of things for presentation if you would like. I'm going to be sprinkling a bit more nutmeg on. It just increases our eggnog flavor and it's also attractive. Now if you are serving this in shorter punch bowl glasses, you can also put in some more of our cinnamon sticks. That looks really pretty and festive. My glass is a bit too large for that so I won't be putting cinnamon sticks in this one. But if you were using shorter punch bowl glasses, it would look very pretty with a cinnamon stick. So. That is what I'm doing for presentation. If you wanted to go extra, you could of course put some sugar-free whipped cream on top. Like I said before, you could also serve this as a coffee beverage, like an eggnog latte, or you could also put alcohol of some kind in here, and I would do that individually or in my punch bowl, and I would just put my alcohol of choice in there and make sure that it got stirred up very well. So there is our keto eggnog. So because this is a fresh product, it is of course cooked with pasteurized eggs, so it is safe to drink. But as with anything that does not have any preservatives or anything artificial in it, you are going to want to use this product within a couple of days. And definitely keep it refrigerated. When you're about ready to serve is when I would put it in the punch bowl. I wouldn't let it sit out for hours and hours because it does have an egg and dairy products in it. So, but this is safe for children and pregnant women and things because we did cook our eggs. Hi CJ. Hi. Welcome back to our seasonal series. This is the fourth recipe. Yep. And tonight we have eggnog. Yay eggnog. Okay. All right. Give it a guzzle. Let us know. Hmm. 
It's good. It's really fresh. It is different than, you know, store-bought eggnog. It's lighter. Uh, it's not as heavy. It's actually refreshing because a lot of times you buy store-bought egg eggnog, it's heavy. And that's why you can't drink a lot of it. Sometimes you have to thin it out. Yeah, it's kind of really because it's so thick. This is actually, you get the eggnog taste, but it's a lot lighter. And so like it, I could drink this glass and it wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel heavy and uh, just like I would with regular eggnog. So I think it's good. I think it's a nice option for people doing keto or low carb. And again, it just shows that you can still enjoy uh, things for the holiday. It may take you a little bit of time to make this, but it really wasn't that hard. I didn't do it, but you were, the, I was watching you and filming you and, and I'm sure that I could have done it as well. Did it taste sugar-free? Well, I don't know what sugar-free tastes like. <laughs> um, no, I mean, well, it just tasted like eggnog. So you could serve it to a mixed crowd. Oh, sure. I don't think, I, I do think people would notice that it's a lot lighter. That it's homemade. It's not. Yeah, it's a lot. I it. think people will notice that. But as far as sweetness or how it tastes, I can't tell the difference. Uh, but it is, again, it's fresher and it's not as heavy. Because I know when I would buy eggnog in the past, it's really thick and heavy. So then I can I would never pour a glass like this, this size, because I wouldn't expect that I could even drink it because it's so rich. And like you thought like you talked about, it's got all that stuff in it. Right. But this is a lot lighter and so you can probably enjoy the whole glass. Good. So all right. Well thank you very much. Sure, thanks, baby. Okay. Bye bye. We hope that you enjoy the eggnog and that you will come back and see us again next week for our final seasonal series recipe. The one that I plan on making next week is going to be focused on New Year's, which is right around the corner. So please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you will know when our further recipes go up. Please also consider following us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and a lot of times we will release teaser recipes about the foods that we have in mind to create and the ones that we have already created. Please head on over to our blog at cjsketokitchen.com and there's where we post all of our recipes, the nutritional information, most of our recipes are principal. Also we have some tips and tricks for the recipes that we have made, things that we have learned. It can be very educational and fun so definitely head on over there. We hope that you will come back again next week and see us for some more delicious ketogenic recipes. And until then, we'll see you next time on CJ's Keto Kitchen. Bye.